A rare interview with American television, Mohammed bin Salman discusses what seemed unlikely just a few years ago, normal diplomatic relations with Israel. As the Biden administration races against time to sign a normalization deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia, a host of issues remain unresolved and now Riyadh seems to be upping the ante. Uh, Saudi Arabia has put uh, different conditions uh, regarding normalization. Uh, For us, the Palestinian issue is very important. We need to solve that part. And we have a good negotiation. It's continue. Till now, we got to see where it will go. It's not a surprise for any of us that Saudi Arabia has always been one of the most leading nations in the world's history. And in the current scenarios, it reflects that Saudi Arabia is going to play a vital part in the end times events. Currently, Saudi Arabia is making major moves that could absolutely set the stage for the end times events. Saudi Arabia's connection to the Temple Mount and the Third Temple has started to unfold. They're currently in talks with Israel for the Abrahamic Accords for a peace plan. They're also in talks with BRICS, a forum that's going to set a global economic world, which is then thought to be controlled by the Antichrist in order to control the world. Saudi Arabia is also working on something they call Saudi Vision 2030, which is similar to the UN's Agenda 2030. Within this vision, they're actually going to build the line, which is actually going to be a city. So what and where does all of this indicate? how Saudi Arabia is going to play a part in the end times and what we need to know about it. You'll find all of this out in the video today, so let's get started. First, we'll take a look at Saudi Arabia's emerging and building ties and connections with the Temple Mount. According to an Israeli news source, in Israel, discussions have recently begun regarding providing Saudi Arabia a formal position on the Temple Mount as an add-on to or in place of Jordan, which has had caretaker status on the Temple Mount since 1994. The purpose of these negotiations is to take Israel closer to normalization with Saudi Arabia. The Temple Mount is thought to be the site of the Third Temple, where the Antichrist will go and perpetrate the abomination of desolation. Not only this, but there are also some other things happening which are also thought to bring the two nations closer to each other. One of which is the high-speed rails, which are thought to be inaugurated by 2040 to take the pilgrims from Saudi Arabia to the Third Temple. As announced by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, a $27 billion plan is on the go to link the north and south of the country by rail. When completed, the projected high-speed rail route will stretch approximately 400 kilometers or 250 miles from the northern city of Kiryat Shmona to the southern city of Eilat. Several Jewish sources attribute the achievement of this project to the Geula, or Redemption. Rabbi Yoshua Lieb Diskin, a famous rabbi in Jerusalem in the late 19th century, is claimed to have heard the sound of the whistle of the first train to arrive in Jerusalem in 1892 and said, they are clearing the way for the Moshiach, or Messiah, and the Geula, or Redemption, is on the way. The Israeli Prime Minister also said that, with the rail line, they will also be able to link Israel by train to Saudi Arabia and the Arabian Peninsula, and that they are working on that too. Much of the Jewish community suspect that this train is a sign of the coming Messiah, not Jesus Christ, who they are currently waiting for, an individual who will almost certainly be the Antichrist or a false prophet. In line with this, Saudi Arabia and Israel are now negotiating a peace deal. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 And he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he will also put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. And on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate even until a complete destruction. One that is decreed is poured out on the one who makes desolate. The Abraham Accords heralded the dawn of a new age of peace. But I believe that we are at the cusp of an even more dramatic breakthrough, an historic peace between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Such a peace will go a long way to ending the Arab-Israeli conflict. It will encourage other Arab states to normalize their relations with Israel. Now look at what happens when we make peace between Saudi Arabia and Israel. The whole Middle East changes. We tear down the walls of enmity. 
we bring the possibility of prosperity and peace to this entire region. It's evident that the Antichrist will appear on the scene proclaiming peace among all religions and peoples of the world, with the third temple there at the Temple Mount, which is probably the place where everyone shows up to worship, where he ultimately descends and stands in and declares himself to be God. And we're beginning to see how this might all be clearly set up amongst these various states, with Saudi Arabia playing a significant role. Speaking of which, there is another project that the Saudi government seems to be working on currently, called The Line. Now what is that? The Line is one of the world's biggest and most complex structures to construct. The concept is a new sort of urban development that spans 170 kilometers and includes several interconnected neighborhoods with natural and pedestrian-friendly spaces. It values people and the environment, and significant tracts of land are set aside for protection. The line, which connects the Red Sea coast to northwest Saudi Arabia, has a 34 square kilometer footprint. Take a look at it yourself. For too long, humanity has existed within dysfunctional and polluted cities that ignore nature. Now, a revolution in civilization is taking place. Imagine a traditional city and consolidating its footprint, designing to protect and enhance nature. The line will be home to 9 million residents and will be built with a footprint of just 34 square kilometers. And we are designing it to provide a healthier, more sustainable quality of life. The Lion's communities are organized in three dimensions. Intelligent solutions create efficiency and year-round temperate microclimate with natural ventilation. Energy and water supplies are 100% renewable. The Line is designed as a series of unique communities, offering a wealth of amenities, providing equitable views and immediate access to the surrounding nature. With 40% of the world accessible within six hours, at the heart of the globe's key trade routes, a place for commerce and communities to thrive like nothing on Earth seen before. The Line, the city that delivers new wonders for the world. Now, as it can be seen in this clip as well, that the line, the metropolis that creates new wonders for the rest of the globe, it appears to be more of an eco-friendly prison than anything else. There are no doors or roads leading to that facility. This is also something that Saudi Arabia is considering as part of their economic vision 2030. This vision is thought to be an economic step to move off their oil resources into other types of resources. The line, which is actually going to be a city, is planned to be home to 9 million residents. In order to be an aspirational nation, Saudi Arabia will focus its governance strategy on responsibility, transparency, and effectiveness, which is also mentioned in their Vision 2030. Solid routes are required for long-term success. To realize this potential, the kingdom will implement a zero-tolerance policy for all levels of corruption, increase transparency by expanding online services and improving governance standards, establish the King Salman program for human capital development to train more than 500,000 government employees in best practices, and strengthen the nonprofit sector through increased efficiency and impact. Now, this all may sound great, but if we look into the depth of everything, we may feel that this links to something bigger that is eventually going to happen at the end of times. While their vision 2030 sounds strikingly similar to the UN agenda, it's another attempt by the world government to establish an absolute control regime. In reality, the Antichrist will be completely involved in various sorts of world control. These are most likely antecedents to the final world control system over which he will have power. And what better method to govern a populace than to confine them behind a gigantic structure and facility like the line? Regulations and new rules will be easier to oversee and implement than when people live on their own outside of a typical metropolis. This is comparable to one of the ideas of 15-minute cities that we're hearing about in connection with Agenda 2030, where everything you need is within a 15-minute walk or bike ride. You don't need a car, and you don't need to be free. All you have to do is follow orders in the name of climate protection. Instead of being constructed around automobiles, cities should be constructed with a quarter-hour walk or bike ride in mind. And this doesn't stop here. Saudi Arabia was also recently invited to BRICS to be a part of the economic forum. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This economic forum is basically the grouping of countries including Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Now, if we pay close attention to all of this, it does seem like a presetting for something that is going to descend and have total world control, both religiously and economically. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. 
let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called god or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. And what we're seeing from these events, again, appears to be a form of forerunner to the Antichrist's global control of economies that appears to be the stage we're in at the world right now, where many things appear to be antecedents in some ways to what the Antichrist will have complete control of pretty much the entire world in every single aspect. Let us stay focused and firm in our faith in these times. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to like the video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up with the most amazing content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.